Back when I was young, never thought I had the state of mind Auntie told me, always keep my head and eyes on the prize No surprise, no I always wouldn't be them other guys Parents taught me better, I was never caught up in disguise Different folk, I was raised a little different all right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Live in the Studio. Today, we are here with Young Citizen or Chris. How are yeah, you, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Very good. Thank you for Very having me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're stoked to have you. Yeah, um, for sure. I always like ask everybody to introduce themselves, even though yeah. I just introduced you. So will you introduce yeah. yourself and tell people what you do? Yeah, for sure. I go by the name of Young Citizen, Y-U-N-G to be exact. And uh, I'm born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a recording artist and a producer, composer, sound designer. Yeah, all that. Nice. Nice. Um, so like you say, uh, songwriter, composer, producer, what did you start with? Producing. Okay. I started producing when I was 16. I tell the story all the time, but, uh, they used to have these, uh, hip hop magazines called a scratch Okay. long time ago. I can't even find them now. Even if I find them, they're on eBay and they're like super expensive, right? Mm. Like super vintage. But, um, I, uh, on the front of the magazine was Chad Hugo and Pharrell Williams. Of okay. course they were taught, they were called the Neptunes. You know, they're still called the Neptunes at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I was a huge fan of them because I love the way that they made music. And I, I love the way it was like super different mm-hmm. um, from what you would literally hear. Like the sounds are just different, but they made them like sound so phenomenal. Right. Yeah. Um, and so then that magazine, I was like, yo, like the magazine always the magazine always had like different tools and resources and like oh, okay. co- equipment. That was the whole point. Like when somebody, when some, when a company came out with a new drum machine or a software came out with a new doll, like, yeah, yo, get this. This is dope. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, cool. At that time, Fruity Loops was like super yeah. popular at the time. Like it just started, and this was like back in like 2004. So I was like, yo, man, I want to make beats. I was like, I'm like, I, th- I think I want to make beats. But I've always grown up like music. Yeah, you know, I listen to a ton of music. Both my uncles are musicians. You know, one of them was a music teacher for a very long time. He's a retired music teacher now. Okay. My other uncle uh, was in the music industry, so he started off working for Universal Records, doing a ton of marketing, um, and now he lives in L.A., but he was in New York, too, at the time. Okay. He's worked for Viacom, MTV, BET, and all that, and um, so all that growing up, I had all that around me. Yeah. Plus me, I'm listening and exploring different sounds and experimenting and listening to different music. And so then um, I told my parents, like, yo, I think I want to make beats. My parents are like, eh, you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That could be a hobby and we'll just see what happens. And so then uh, after that, I, I started making my own beats. Like I bought like a $99 keyboard M Audio from like Best Buy. Yep. And I just started just like experimenting on Fruity Loops. Fruity yeah. Loops was like free. Like you can get a free version of it. It wasn't a full version. Yeah. The free version didn't allow you to save your sessions. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, dang, I just got to like, I'm going to bounce it and then I can't go back to it. It is what it is. Right. right? Um, so then I did that throughout high school through like sophomore all the way through to senior. Um, what got me into college and uh, was football. Okay. So I played two years of football in high school and then um, I ended up getting an offer to play D2 at Catawba College in okay. uh, Salisbury. So I played two years of football there, but... I realized, like, when you first go into school, like, they ask you, like, okay, they get you with your advisor, okay, what do you want to do? Like, you know, what do you want to major? And I'm like, oh, dang, like, they have a music business business program. I was like, okay, let me let me get into that. They they, they, they didn't have, like, a producing program. Mm-hmm. They didn't have, like, a songwriting program. They, it's just strictly, like, music performance, music business, or just music. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I went into music business because I'm like, okay, cool. Like, let me just get the business aspect of the industry, yeah. and then I can figure it out later. I'm going to still make my beats. I'm going to still do this. After my second year of playing ball, I was just like, you know, this isn't really taking me. Any, I don't think I'm going to go. In, I'm, I'm definitely not going pro. That's not right, happening. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, I was able to, you know, pivot from football to bringing some of that money over to the music department. Oh, okay. So That's I had a cool. partial scholarship music was, and um, That's awesome. did an interview and everything for it. And my advisor was super supportive. And then I just took over, like, I just got my Go hands in. dirty in the music yeah. department. I was, I was trying to take in everything. I was a sponge, you know, I yeah. was learning piano from freshman year on. Uh, I was running the sound for all the shows that we had. Yeah. Uh, I even, uh, created a class that's still there to this day really? uh yeah cool. so they had um you know when you go to college for music they have ensembles yeah and one of the ensembles was called vernaculars okay. and that allows the students to like get into like the, you, you you form a band and you just perform like covers okay. but it's giving you that practice of like being in front of people uh performing and things like that so yeah. 
we had vernaculars. We had several vernacular groups. It was, it was, but it was mostly like rock and country. So I went to my advisor. I was like, "Hey, look, man, like we kind of need to kind of change it up. Like I love running the sound for for these shows that we have. You know what I'm saying? In the, in in the uh, in the theaters, but I'm like, yo, we need to bring like R and B and hip hop to the to the yeah. campus. Like we need to, you know, kind of shake up the culture a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, all right, well. I, I I support it. You put it together and build it, and we'll we'll do it. So that summer of um, two thousand, I think it was two thousand nine. Hmm. I was putting everything together, how the class would be, what what we would perform, and um, I came back and I I held rehearse I'm not rehearsals. I, I held auditions. Okay. So all these students were coming in, like That's all my really friends. Cool. I wanted to be part of it, <laughs> like so. I formed this group. It was called Urban Soul. Hmm. Right. Um, I think the first show we did was Motown. Okay. And then we ended up doing um what else did we do? We did like a hip hop, we did like some Lauren Hill and stuff like that. Okay. And the other vernaculars, like they did like uh they did Pink Floyd, they okay. did the Beatles, yeah, which like, was dope. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Really cool. Um I was able to run sound for those, but I was able to really be part of this urban soul and really build it up. Um but to this day it's still there as a as as part of an ensemble. It's That's called really cool. Yeah, it's called Urban Soul and people still sign up for the class. Nice. And uh one of so my good sounds you know, like it's like a focus on like like going after learning different styles together. Is yeah. That, that yeah. So That's you're cool. like, you know, you, you got your guitar players knowing how to play live. Yeah. You know, everybody's on this different music, but they're performing in front of the school. Yeah. So they have shows at the end of the semester. So like, that's like your, so the whole class is you're practicing leading up to a show at the end of the semester. Yeah. So like August, we're doing Motown and uh, we're doing Motown before we leave Christmas break. Okay. So we have to learn like, like eight, like eight songs. Okay. Do a whole Motown show. And then we did the, uh, uh, the students did a whole like Beatles album. That's cool. Yeah, and so it it was just dope. So um, throughout those whole th- through, throughout my college career, you know, creating Urban Soul. Uh, at that, I think after that, I became a junior, and uh, I was in class, and my professor was like, "Yo, so like it's time for y'all to you know get some internships. Like we got to figure out internships." And um, this was specifically the, like the music business class. This is when we learned about the business. We learned about royalties, BMI. Yeah. We learned about the record labels, the deals, and all that, the, the contracts, the publications, all that. Yeah. So then he was like, yo, um, you know, it's time for y'all to start applying for internships for the summer. And so, like, everybody was going to, and my professor advisor is still my one of my good friends. His name is Dr. Fish, hmm. Dr. David uh, Lee Fish. Um, he's retired now, but... Man, he 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 helped a lot. But um, everybody went to him. Was like, yo, I don't know where to start. Yeah, uh, find an internship. I didn't like. I was like, okay, we want to. You want you want me to find an internship? Yeah. Say less. I went straight to my dorm. I remember because that music building was literally like across the street from my dorm. Mm-hmm. So literally, like, I didn't like. I was never late to class because it's like right there. Yeah. But as soon as class ended, I went straight to my dorm, hmm. got to work. <clears throat> And um, I started redoing some research. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, where, where would I intern? I definitely want to do a studio. Yeah. I said, so if I go anywhere out of town, the only person I could probably live with is my uncle because he lives in New York. Yeah. I said, so let me, let me. So I called him. I was like, hey, listen, Unc, like if I find an internship in New York, like would you allow me to like stay with you, you know, for three months? And he was like, yeah, for sure. Like talk to my parents and everything. So I started finding all recording studios in New York. That's I awesome. sent applications to everybody. Um, and then Jambox, Miss Kathy Palmazino, Palmasano, excuse me. Um, she emailed me back mm-hmm. like maybe like a week later. It was like, hey, yeah, let's definitely uh, let's get on the phone. Let's interview. Let's talk. At that point, we had the conversation. She loved me. And she was like, yeah, we would love to have you. When can you come? I said uh, it was spring semester. I said, I, t- I think after the spring semester, I'm just going gonna, gonna to fly up there, tell my uncle and then we'll I'll be there. Let's go. Yeah. So I had my professor. I had Dr. Fish um, write me a. Letter recommendation. My uncle wrote me a letter recommendation, and I sent it in. And then after the after that spring semester, I flew to New York, landed, took the cat. I said goodbye to my parents in Charlotte. Got on yeah. the plane. You know, my mom was crying. Whatever. Yeah. I, was like, I gotta go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My dad was like, "Yo, go do your thing." You know, <laughs> like they literally dropped me off that morning. I remember, and I flew into New York. Yeah, didn't know nothing about getting a cab. Yeah, I didn't know anything. That was my first time ever traveling by myself. Yeah, got the cab. My uncle gave me the address. I said, here. I told the cab I was, like, scared. Yeah. Just, just take me to this address right here. He was like, oh, okay. Like, the cab driver already knew what was up. Yeah. I didn't know anything about getting the cab. Right. Yeah, I've never I've never gotten a cab. I've never even gotten an Uber. 
Really? Yeah, never. Oh, man, you got it. It's kind of crazy now. Well, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where, <laughs> like... those crazy stories. <laughs> I mean, I've never... So, I guess we talked about this a little bit earlier, but I think just it was kind of a consequence, honestly, like, of getting married young. Like, we stopped hanging out with, like, people our age at that point. Oh, really? Like, yeah, like, we got married at 18, and it was just one of those things where we were figuring out how to make ends meet for the, like the years where normally we maybe would have been like hanging out and like where you would go get an Uber. Like, I don't know. And we also have always lived like out in yeah, we're city the middle of nowhere. Say we're so y'all live out here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're gotcha. like, we, yeah, we're pretty close. So it's one of those where we end up like really, I, I've driven, I, my first truck was like a 88 and it was just a beater truck and I just drove it. I bet that like, thing drove to the, I, I still got it. To the, I still I, got it. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah I like, love I, it. man, I still wish I had, I had a, a 1990 Hondo Accord. Okay. Four door, man. I love that car, man. I'm, it had like over 230,000 miles on yeah. it when I had to let it, let it go. But Something about your first car, right? I still miss that car, yeah. man. It was so simple. <laughs> See, like, oh, she wants me to get rid of the truck. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a 1988 GMC Sierra. <laughs> it's a little little tiny truck, but man, man that it's, should be like a little it's project. Eight situation. cylinder. Oh it's wow! A, it's an eight cylinder, but it's a tiny truck, and so I mean, yeah. What's funny is the speedometer only goes up to seventy. It definitely oh. goes over 70. Like, okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so eventually, you're just like, I remember just, being on the freeway as a kid, which I was always nervous, like when yeah. I first started driving to get on the freeway, but like I'd be trying to accelerate to keep up with traffic and this yeah. pedometer would just be like all the way. And oh, just, facts. That's yeah, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. So then. you went and got the internship. What was that like? Oh, that was dope. So I'm going to tell y'all like from the from the beginning, like like I said, I got in the cab, took me, took me to my uncle's apartment. He had a nice, he had a nice, he had a nice apartment. I'm like, dang, this is nice. <laughs> She's right in the middle of Manhattan. At that time, he's working for Viacom. Yeah. So he works at the main MTV building. Viacom is like MTV, uh, uh, BET, VH1, mm-hmm. Adult Swim. Yeah. Uh, I think Cartoon Network is all in that same building, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. So we get, I get to the building, drop my luggage off. He was like, he's like, you know what? What would make a good impression? My uncle taught me everything that whole summer. It's like, you know, what would make a good impression is if you just, let's go to the studio now so you can see how to get there. Yeah. So it was like a 15, 20 minute walk. Yeah. And it was in New York is hot. Yeah. So like, he was like, all right, so make sure when you walk, like take, you know, take a little break into like one of these stores so you can cool off. Cause it, it gets hot. I yeah. had to take like a change of shirt, like every day when I yeah. walk to the studio. Cause I didn't want to waste money on like. I didn't want to waste money on the cab. I didn't yeah. want to waste money on the uh, on the trains. You know what I'm saying? So we get to the studio. We we walk to the studio. And she was like, oh, my God, you're not supposed to start until, like, tomorrow. I'm like, oh, no, like, two days from now. I'm like, I, I know. And, you know, I just wanted to. Already to, here. I'm, 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 I'm here. You yep. know what I'm saying? She was like, wow. So that put a huge impression on her. That's when she really was like. That was, I think, when I left, because we were both, like, ugly crying when I had to leave my last day. <laughs> but that was one of the main things That's she brought really cool. up. She was just like, I love how you were so intentional on coming here, even though you weren't starting yet. But yeah. you just wanted to make sure, like, you knew what you were doing, and you wanted just to know who you were. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She said that stood out to her, like, hmm. from the beginning. Um, I like, learned, how old during all this? Like, 21, 22? Yeah, I'm, like, 20. Yeah, I'm, yeah. like, 20, like, 22. Okay. Yeah, and so... Um, my experience those three months was like, it was work. Mm -hmm. I was either cleaning up the studios for the sessions. I was booking the sessions. I was sending out promo and stuff. This is before like Instagram was popping. Yeah. Um, I was sending out promo, Facebook, emails and stuff like that. Um, I was, I was exporting like physical tapes that Mm -hmm. you would put in like a tape player Mm -hmm. to like wave MP3. Okay. Um, and then put them like on the CD or something like, or send the files off. Okay. I had to do that. Um, we did some community outreach. Mm-hmm. Um, her daughter was, uh, her name is Lori Michaels. Okay. So uh, she was doing, we, we did community outreach. I was getting coffee for, uh, I was getting coffee for clients. Yeah. Um, during that time, that's when I really got into a new software, which was Logic Pro. Yeah. And this is when Logic Pro, like Logic, I, I don't know if you use Logic. I think, I think, I think I saw Reason on here. I've got, uh, typically, I, my first job was using Pro Tools because it's like, it just. Pro Tools, of course. It. Yeah. And then. Um, pretty much though, like for me, I've always either used Cubase or Reason. Uh, I I do a lot of my tracking in the Reason, and yeah. then I mix a lot of my stuff in Cubase. I, I have Logic on my yeah yeah. So you know how Logic you can just download it from the App Store, right? Mm-hmm. No, this Logic was in like fourteen CDs. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you had to put it in one by one into your Mac, yeah. let that thing download. So I think like one whole eight hour day that I was at the studio. <laughs> that's I had my computer sitting 
in the in the lounge as I was in the office, Just like all the libraries and everything. Yeah, you yeah. had to download all mm-hmm. that stuff, right? And so uh, I learned how to. I, I I got an audio engineer certificate while I was there because her husband Lee Evans um, was the owner of the studio. They were both owners of the studio, but he was an engineer and he taught an audio engineering class. Okay. So I, I was able to do that for free. That's cool. So nice. I was able to get my certificate, you know, my, my certification through that. And then I was, of course I was um, like within that, I just learned so much. I was in those sessions, you know, yeah. but my uncle, this is the crazy thing is like, the crazy thing is like the things my uncle had me doing. Mm-hmm. Right. So him working for MTV and stuff, got to go to the VH1 hip hop honor awards. Mm-hmm. Like I would leave the studio. He'd be like, yo, you want to go to the VH1 hip hop honors? Heck yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, at that time, that's when Drake came out with Thank Me Later. Okay. Uh, Drake's tour manager at that time, uh, his name was Jamil, used to intern for my uncle. Jamil used to intern for my uncle when my uncle worked for Universal. Oh, okay. Drake was in New York and he just came out with Thank Me Later. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, he was in the city. I leave the studio. My uncle's like, hey, man, Drake just came out with this album. You ever heard of Drake? I was like, heck yeah, bro. <laughs> and he was like, uh, he just came out with this album. I was like, yeah, thank me later. He was like, yo, well, he's doing a release party over here at uh, uh, Flight Club, which is a sneaker boutique. Okay. And he was like, you want to go? I was like, yeah, bro. <laughs> That's cool. So, like, I got to, I met, awesome. I met everybody when I went up there. What is, so, if you don't mind me asking, what does your uncle do? Now? Uh, or then, I guess. He was like, working for Viacom. Like, doing, like, marketing? Marketing, VP okay. of marketing. Okay. Stuff like got that. You. Yeah, he was on, he did marketing at uh, Universal Records. So he just kind of ended up talking to every, everybody. He just that, knew everybody. Yeah, yeah. that's like, really cool. When he was at Universal, man, he did marketing for, uh, Prince was releasing an album at one point. Okay. And he, he was at the table with Prince. Wow. And wow. trying to figure out, okay, how do you want this marketed? He was that's at the really table. really cool. Yeah, so, like... It was just crazy. It's so crazy because you went into music business too. So like, yeah. I'm sure that, you know, like, like when I think about having, I, so I, I come from like my family and there's no musicians except my grandmas who play piano. Yeah. And other than that, I, no one plays anything. I just picked it up by chance kind of thing. Yeah. It wasn't like I had like a, a model of that or mm-hmm. anything. She comes from, her dad was a jazz major, uh, plays saxophone. Yeah. Um, and then was like uh, worship pastor and then plays guitar and everything else. So mm-hmm. her family all plays. So interesting that like you have a music business degree and yet your uncle is like basically working in like marketing for music. Which exactly. Is such a cool. Like, he would tell me like I remember we would talk all the time about music. <clears throat> he would tell me he was like, hey, yo, look, nephew, like music's about to change. Yeah. People are burning CDs now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We're about to go into a whole different realm of music. Like, yeah. he knew when it was about to go into streaming. Yeah. So he told me, like, all right, just be ready for this. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. He, 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 like, he knew all those things. Hmm. Um, but even during that summer, there were times where he had to go, like, overseas for, like, a whole week or two. Yeah. And I would have the whole crib to myself. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. walking to the crib and the studio by myself, going to get food by myself. Like... He yeah. introduced me to the, you know, I don't know if you ever heard of like, uh, they're called like bodegas mm-hmm. in New yeah, York where yeah, you yeah. go get sandwiches and it's like a mini grocery store yep. stuff. So like he introduced me to the guys like, like across the street from the apartment and I forgot their names, man, but they were some of the nicest guys. Like they knew I was up, up there for three months interning. Yeah. And, like, so some, sometimes like when he would go out of town, I don't know if he would even tell them like, yo, nephew's going out of town if he comes in. Just know, you know, he's by himself. Like, yeah. they would take care of me sometimes. Like, I needed something to eat. Hmm. They would give me free sandwiches and stuff like that. And really they cool. just knew who I was. Sound like you're close with your family, yeah? Yeah, That's exactly. Really cool. Yeah, That's really so cool. It was just cool, man. And so I did that. Got back to school. My senior year was well, my senior year was phenomenal. That's yeah. when I really got into my songwriting. Like, yeah. learning. Like, songwriting from junior to senior year was, like, really in-depth. And my senior year, man... um, that's when like I was really into like sending beats to these artists like in the industry, mm-hmm. and I ended up getting a placement uh, with this rapper named Nico. Okay, uh, he used to rap with like Wiz Khalifa and stuff like that. Okay, um, but he ended up using one of my one of my beats that I sent him, mm. and like it kind of went crazy a little bit, you know, like oh. it went really well, and so like everybody on campus thought I was like I was nowhere near famous. <laughs> like, oh my god, Young yeah. City out here, like Young City was good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like <laughs> people were just like, okay, like. Yeah, young yeah. is serious out here. Some some recognition and some yeah. validation in what you're doing. That's awesome. Yeah, and so then leading like from there, leading up to now, I just really started my. You know, I'm really in my journey of like being an artist and a producer. Like, yeah. you know, putting out my own projects, producing for other artists and things like that. So, hmm. performing, having performances, and you know, opening up for uh, Goody Mob, CeeLo Green. Okay, last year, very cool. This year, performing yeah. in front of a 
UNCC Orchestra, you know, just trying awesome. new things. And and, yeah. and, it's, and it's just, it looks, you know, it's becoming phenomenal and just experimenting new things, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah so now, up, up until now, I'm just, I'm just doing my thing. <laughs> yeah. That's really <laughs> cool. Working hard. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I, I definitely think when it comes to like getting involved with uh, one of the first things you said I resonated with, which was you were learning like different, um, like either about gear or whatever through that magazine. Yes. Like it's a little different, but when I started learning audio, like one, there was a page on, um, on YouTube called the recording revolution. Have you ever seen this page? I've never heard of it. Okay. Well, so for me, like it was this sort of like ultimate resource when I first started. I mean, yeah. I, I was, I think if you went and like, you know, now they do it like where like, like iPhone will like record how much time you spend watching like one app or whatever. Oh, right? facts. Like, It'll be like, I, I always get that um, if notification. That, we're about to shut you down. If like that existed minutes. for me watching that YouTube channel, it would, yeah. I like, I pretty much just would like wake up, watch one of his videos and like just start learning. And, yeah, for sure. And that was one of the big ways I think trying to understand especially now and what's crazy is is because music has changed so much so fast in yes, some ways and it's still changing yeah and the idea that in recording like this was one of the first people that i watched and he was pretty much like it doesn't matter what gear you have like it doesn't. just it's how start, you use it just start trying exactly and yeah i really like especially young like 19 like really uh like was encouraged by that and and it was one of the things that like pushed me to start it was like he put out this thing like um uh something like some challenge to make like an ep in like a week or some challenge yeah. to make like a song in a day or, or whatever and mm -hmm. like he would put these different goals on his page and then start doing them himself and then sort of ask you to follow along right and mm -hmm. so this was like some of the first i never even honestly i never even like outright did one but i did like use it as inspiration like at one point we got like one of our first gigs we ever booked we were like we need to have something at this gig we don't have anything to give away we didn't really expect to get it so we we tracked like a three song ep in like the weekend and then just took it with us right yeah, and that yeah. was all inspiration of like i'm like we can totally do this you know For sure yeah. because i had seen it done before and i remember just learning so much like and that's one of my favorite things about it is is like there's it's becoming to the point where like, I mean, you went to school for music business, yeah. which I'm sure you did like a good amount of production work within that. Cause I think oh, especially yeah. back then, all the programs, like I, I totally know what you're talking about. Like when I went into school, I wanted to go for music, but a lot of the programs you would find would be like labeled something else. And yeah, it was just like, like a lot of performance. If you yeah. want to be a music teacher and there was a lot a of stuff like kind of roped into it, but they didn't quite have the full program yet. Right, like I exactly. definitely, I definitely experienced that. And eventually I just ended up, I ended up with a job in it. And so I was like, this is pretty much, I'm already, why would I go back? Like, to, yeah. Like back. why would yeah, I? For sure. And, um, yeah. like through that process though, sort of recognizing like you can learn, there's so much that you can learn now. Oh yeah. And you can do it pretty much 15, 16. Like that's what you're saying. Like you were, you were a kid when you mm -hmm. started and I was pretty much the same way. Like yeah. I joined my first band at like 16 and we started trying to track records. Yeah. And before I knew it, like, there's a passion that I could not just like shut off to keep yeah. doing it. Yeah, and, thanks to the internet, very little is gate kept now. I think. Yeah, it's nice that way. Exactly. You can learn but anything. that's the thing, like, you know, even though it wasn't like a main focus on what I really wanted to do when I was in college, I'm still thankful for like, yeah, I'm still thankful for music theory, yeah, one and two, yeah. oral skills. Like, music theory helped me so much that I know, like, like when I was, uh, when I did the UNCC performance last month, you know, the musicians were there and I'm looking at the the music sheets. I haven't looked at music sheets in a long time, mm -hmm. but she was like, where do you want us to start? I'm like, okay, yeah, start at this note right here. I just knew it yeah. just came to me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, like I know how to read music still. You know, that mm -hmm. muscle memory is still there. So yeah. I just, I appreciate us having to analyze all those music sheets for homework or for a test and mm -hmm. realizing when the key, what, what key signature we're in and when it changes to another key, you know yep. what I'm saying? Like, I'm, and then I'm able to hear things mm -hmm. differently too. Like I'm able to, you know, I, uh, I'm able to have, you know, one of my, one of my good friends, she's an artist. Her name is Dior. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, she's a folk songwriter okay. and, uh, I ended up producing a record for her and, uh, it, it's called soft, but she sent me that she sent me just her singing on the guitar, mm -hmm. like on a recording. And I ended up making a whole track out of that. Right. And I was able to do that because of things that I learned in college. You know, those yeah. those classes really helped a lot. Those classical, you know, those classical classes helped a lot. 
those those piano. I, I, were I, you I, were you around other musicians like before school a lot or? Ah, not really. Not I was really. just around like yeah. rappers. Okay, rappers yeah. and like you know, pe- you know, dudes. I just wanted to like you know, I want to explore making beats. Yeah. Um, and I was just around that. I wasn't around musicians like that. And yeah. I wish like if I was to go back into time, like teenage years and going to high school, I probably wouldn't went to our. I would have asked my parents to put me in an art school. Mm. You know, we have a school in Charlotte called Northwest School of the Arts. I yep. wish I wouldn't went there. Yeah, because I have friends that went there that are phenomenal musicians. Yeah, I've seen. I like when you if you ever walk around in Uptown Charlotte, like you see, like there'll be like little pockets of musicians hanging out in the park playing, just, just hanging doing, out. Like, yeah, yeah, and it's that's from that school. And I I remember, uh, I think it some honestly probably some like church activity or something when I was a kid where we were like up and walking around and doing like community just different like like. Uh, either like handing out like meals or whatever else sure. like up in Charlotte. And there would be like, we'd be walking around in like a break or whatever. And I remember, I don't remember what the park is called, but I do remember it. Like, and there's like a little trio of like somebody playing cello, violin and somebody playing guitar. And they were just insane. And I was good. like, where yeah. are you guys from? They're like, Oh, there's a school like five minutes from here. I'm like, that sounds expensive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know how much. Is it expensive? I don't know. Northwest I, School of Arts. I'm sure That's it just is. a regular high school. You had to audition oh, to get in. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, you had to audition to get in. And I, I wish I would do that because I played sax. That's another thing. Like, I played saxophone from elementary school. Yeah. Until a little bit of middle school, then yeah. I just like put it down. See, we. I wish I would have had that. I wish. I wish I still had a saxophone. I don't know. I, part of me thinks about it now. Like, would I go back and do it now? Because I would like. At 18, I wouldn't have put the work in, but at, in my 20s, I would. So I'm hey, almost man, it's 30. Not too, but. It's not too late. It's not too late, my boy. <laughs> I ended up going for, um, I, I have an associate's in arts. That's what I ended up doing in school. Well, I think it's I think it's important, more important to weigh whether or not you should go to school for music, but like really anything more based on how you are as a person and less on how like I need this to do this because I right. think there are people who like him learn really well on YouTube Mm -hmm. and will get more out of that on their own time and like observing what people are doing more so than sitting in a class. Whereas I'm somebody I do good in school. You know what I mean? Like I like that structure. Yeah, for sure. But that's not for everybody, but you don't have to do either one. Music is, you don't don't know. It's unique in the sense that it's kind of could be, uh, it can go either direction, which is kind of what we're saying. But like, you know how like now they're starting to pitch because um, school is getting this sort of like, uh, I'll just say like for a while, you know, I mean, we all know this, like college is pushed really hard, especially when you're young, like go to school, go to school, go to school, go to school. Yes. And now they're kind of, there's this other thing that's rising up of like trade school is really helpful too. Like, you know, yeah, that's trying to build trade schools. music kind of has the ability to be either yeah. or like you can kind of treat it like a trade school and you can learn guitar from like somebody else who's very mm-hmm. experienced. You can learn mixing like a, 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 as a trade through a studio internship or something like that. Like you can go that route fully. Or you can go and do like a formal education in it. And it it really is kind of a hybrid. It exists in a space that I don't think a lot of other things do where you truly can do it both ways. And and Mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are very successful in the music industry who haven't done one lick of school or formal training. There are a lot of people who are very successful because they did a lot of formal training. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, and so, yeah, for sure. hit or miss. Um, I want to ask you about the morning pages. For sure. That's, so that's you were story. talking about like vulnerability in your music, all this. Yes. Stuff, right. I want to hear kind of like, uh, tell us about, because it's an EP. Yes. Uh, you just, when did it come out? Like March very, 3rd. Very recently. Yeah. Yes. Um, I know uh, you said on Instagram, uh, I think the quote is that it saved your life. Saved my life. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So uh, tell us about that. I was battling with a lot of things. Uh, I was battling with addiction. Uh just like I, I was battling with addiction, but then I was also battling like mentally with like different things, you know, being a creative and, you know, loving myself as a creative and accepting who I am as a creative mm-hmm. and an artist, you know what I'm saying? On, on the things that I talk about. So the morning pages is literally a, uh, it's a mental exercise. Uh, you write three pages in your journal every morning. The first, the first thing you do when you wake up. Right. So, and I got this from this book that I read called The Artist Way okay. uh, by an author. Her, her name is Julia Cameron. Okay. Um, and so I read the book and I was like, okay, the morning pages. Okay. Let, let, let me, let me try this out. So I got it. I bought a pack of journals and I wrote three pages in the journal and I was like, wow, I feel a lot better. The whole point of it is to get out of your own way. Hmm. Right. A lot of people think that, and I know some people still believe this. I, I don't believe in uh, uh writer's block. Okay. I believe that the reason we have quote unquote writer's block is because we have so much going on in our mind, hmm. which is the point of the morning pages, which is to get all that out before you uh, move on and start and start your day. Right. Okay. Um, 
how I knew this exercise worked, I did it for, I did it, uh, I started doing it in 2021. By that summer, I had plenty of journals written. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so my homie hit me up. He was like, yo, man, like, I I got this record, you know, that I produced, you know what I'm saying? I want you to come in and like, let's, let's, let's make a song. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So that morning um, I, I wrote my pages and then I went to the studio that afternoon. Uh, and within two hours I had two verses written and the song was done. Mm. Right. So I'm like, okay. Like I was able to come up with the concept as soon as I heard the beat. I was like, I know exactly how I'm going to do it. I know yeah. exactly what the song is going to be about. And I was like, let's do it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, the song was called, and I just, be, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. The song was called Black Dope. Mm. Right now, I don't cuss at any of my music. I don't use profanity or anything like that. So, when he said the song was called "Black Dope," he's talking about like how dope it is to be black. Okay. So cool. what I did was I used that as I used the word "dope." I mean, to some people, this this could offend it, but I use it as like a drug. Got you. Yeah. So you know, I, I was like, okay, black dope. Let's talk about how dope it is to be how dope it is for us to be black. It's like it's almost like a you know it's almost like. A, a drug like an like i want to be black yeah. i love being black you know what i'm saying yeah so i was able to kind of use that metaphor me- metaphorically like that yeah and it just turned out it turned out really good it turned out dope <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. I, I like the pun <laughs> Yo, own it. <laughs> it turned out dope you know what i'm saying and so then yeah. i was like okay these this this helps yeah but writing those pages every morning those three pages every morning i was able to get out what i what i'm feeling yeah i went through an addiction so i was able to go to therapy yeah i was in therapy every single week um, last year I was in therapy every week. Miss Kathy is like a blessing. Mm. I thank God for Miss Kathy. She saved me. You know what I'm saying? Like writing these pages saved me. Mm. I it 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 made me a better husband, a better human being, and it even it, and I should have said this first, but it made me a better person to to God. You know mm. what I'm saying? I was able to have those conversations, those uncomfortable conversations, not only with my therapist and my wife, but also with God. Yeah. Um. And I'm I'm just a true believer. Like it just it helped. It, mm. it 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 I mean it it turned everything around for me. You can even yeah. ask my wife to this day. She's just like, yo, he turned all the way around after therapy and writing those pages every day. So you know? when when did it when did that idea become an album, right? Like because that's I, what it sounds was, like, right? Yeah, it got so channeled in. I, I I hit up one of my home uh I, I hit up uh he's I feel like he's a homie to me now, but <laughs> I hit up a homie down in Atlanta. His he, he goes by the name of Audio Anthem. Okay. But his real name is Raphael. Okay. And uh he produced uh actually one of the songs I'm gonna the one the song I'm gonna perform is called Brown's Ferry. Okay. And uh we collabed on that. And so what happened was he he sent me some beats at one point <clears throat> and then I just for some reason I picked three. Okay. And I was like, okay, I got three beats. But they just they just felt they felt so good. I was like, man, why don't I just uh, why don't I call? and I started writing the songs. But I was writing what I was feeling, like what I was going through, mm-hmm. battling, you know what I'm saying, mentally what I was going through, loving myself, learning to love myself again. I'm like, oh, this is the morning pages right here. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah. okay, I write three pages every day. This is three songs. Let's just call this the morning pages. Mm-hmm. And so I just like when you listen to it. It's almost like a journal entry. Yeah. It's like one of my journal entries. That's what somebody somebody told me that when they was like, yo, when I listen to your to the morning page, you know, he, he was like, when I listen to the EP, it was like I was reading a journal entry out of your journal. And I was like, bro, that's literally what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's like you got your three songs. Like the first song is called Cross the T. It's almost like I, I need help. Mm-hmm. I know I need help. I need to go seek it. Then it's fortune cookie. Like it's telling me that like I'm getting the help and I'm loving myself. And then Morning Pages, the last song, it's like I'm healed. It's like the ending. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Yeah. And so that's just how everything is formatted. So it just came out perfectly. That's really cool. Um, so that's, that's what the Morning Pages is about, you know? And I ended up having a mental pan, uh, not, excuse me. I ended up having a mental health panel. Mm-hmm. I brought in a therapist. Uh, her name is Shayla uh, St. James. And uh, she came in and, and, and talked to the, to the to the people that came. I sold out the panel, mm. um, and so we we had a, a a real open conversation with everybody just about mental health and what I was battling, and it opened people to talk about themselves and what they were battling. Got you. Um, and then I ended up doing a live art show, like literally, I brought my studio in the middle of a room. Yeah. And uh, we did like a live 
like situation where I was like kind of recording my vocals all over again. Got you. And then talking about like, okay, this is why I did it this way. This is what it sounds like. You nice. Know? That's awesome. Yeah, it was. That dope. sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, cool, man. That, it was the... really cool to the point where people were like, "Yo, you need to take this on the road." I'm like. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I mean, we can talk about it and just being in different spaces to yeah. do that. Well, just yeah. the artistry and the idea, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I think for a lot of people, like what I hear, um, like, so I'm a, so I'm a songwriter. I've been writing for years and, and there's like the art of like creating a song mm -hmm. and then there's the art of like en enveloping it in this whole process. Right? Yeah. Like, like people don't like, see that. People don't, yeah. people always see the ending. Right. Like, and I want them to see the, or they, or just the song. Right. And like, yeah. you're not talking about just a song. You're talking about something that happened in your life that became a journal entry yeah. that became an EP that became a live art show that became a conversation about mental health. Yes. Like that is a full thing as yes. opposed to it's just, Oh, I heard that one song it, when it released on Spotify, you know, exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. And I think that, that to me, like, honestly, is an inspiration on the idea of like, man, like I don't really th like I do, but I'm, I'm somebody like I get really, uh, I, I guess maybe I just grew up around the, the, one of the things that stood out to me the most was like the idea of the album. And that's like, it's, it's going away, it? right? It like, is, bro. I don't want to, I want albums yeah, again. Yeah. Nobody wants to take the time to listen to albums anymore. Well, and even now when they, when you come up with an album, it's, it becomes, it, it just becomes 12 singles. You know what I, I mean? I was just about to say it becomes and, 12 singles. And uh, it's one of those where like when I, when it does that, like it, it kind of ends up detracting from like, capturing that story you're talking about you know exactly and i love when artists took their time coming out with albums yeah i like when the deal takes 10 years to drop an album you're 30 <laughs> i'm 35 i'm 27 and i remember like literally i think i have to have been one of the last generations that did this like standing outside the cd store I, like bro, hoping for the the album that i was looking for that just came out blah 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 and I, that's I used, gone bro album music and i was contemplating I said, man, projects used to come out on Tuesdays. Yeah. People don't even remember that. Like, <laughs> I would go to school, and I, and at, at 2 o'clock, I am jetting to Best Buy yeah. before it set, before the album sells out. Yeah. I need to find the album. Yeah. Where's it at? You know, Jay-Z dropped a couple of albums during, that, during, the, during those times, and I'm like, yo, I need to go get it. Yeah. You know? And so, like, nobody... It's like, we're not in that album era anymore. Everything comes out on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> when we listen to the album, we don't listen to it like in a album form in a context it's like mm -hmm. i want to go from top to bottom mm -hmm. you know i wanted to tell a whole story you know what i'm saying that's yeah. why i appreciate a few of these you know mainstream artists that still do that yeah because now when people come out with these albums it's like yeah it's like 12 singles it's like yeah okay i'm trying to i i don't know we're working on we're working on a uh, actually on a worship album right now yeah. uh, but it, it's gonna be like it's 11 songs it started off Really, it started off as like twenty or thirty, and like as it does, you try to narrow it down, you know. And, For sure, yeah, uh, as you should. Dude, and, get it, as many songs as you can. Okay, hey, what what tells the story? Yeah, and so it's it's kind of become this thing where we we decided. I think we're doing like four singles for it. Which is like I think a good. Okay. Want to leave some meat on the bone, like like to not have. Mm -hmm. Like you put an album out and it's just kind of a dud when like you put it in the CD and like eight or nine of Everyone's the songs out of the already. ten you've already heard. Like, you know that and part. That and and you know just trying to, I don't know, rebel a little bit in its own way in that no, way because I, I just don't want to do I don't want to do ten singles and like yeah it just doesn't seem like maybe I'm sure it would work and I'm sure that there's pieces of it that I think I'd enjoy but then then I feel like there's something about just like putting a CD in which now cars don't have CD players so eventually <laughs> yeah like my car doesn't have you to buy your own yeah I have I have one car with one and one car without. <laughs> Right. Um, tell us about your your collaboration with like Charlotte Strings Collective. Oh man, that was crazy. So, you know, we were talking about school and mm -hmm. how, you know, you know, school's not for everybody, which is true. I, I really graduated college because some people thought I wasn't even going to finish. Mm -hmm. So that was like my my point. You know, I was like the first child in my family to graduate college because I want to be the first. I want to I want to break that. Mm -hmm. I want to be the first one. So then, um, I started like really. I found myself really enjoying like teaching for some reason. And it wasn't even teaching music specifically. It was real. Uh, I did four years of like mentoring at West Charlotte High School with okay. the football team. I was kind of like the life coach, so I okay. would like talk to the kids all the time. I was like, dang, I kind of like talking to talking to people and teaching. You know what I'm saying? I decided to go back to school at UNCG to attempt to get my master's in music education because I'm like, you know, I would love to be a professor. Mm -hmm. Like, that's actually one of my goals now. I want to be a music professor, but I want to more so be a music professor. I want to teach 
these students things that I wish I resources I had yeah. when I was in college. And now that I have these resources, I want to I want to help I want to help these students. Yeah. So I did a semester at UNCG. Uh, after that semester, I did phenomenal. I did better than I did an undergrad. I think when you go back to school after taking a break, oh man, like, yeah. that you, was after, t- you just take it more seriously. Yeah, like, yeah. This I was, did too. This was during COVID. This was like back in 20, 20, 2021, I think. I, I remember like getting out of school and being like thinking about how hard it was. And then I remember like going back after like a year or two. Dude, and I was easy. like, school is easy. Easy. Like, <laughs> I don't even know why I was like, dang. I think like, writing just, a 10 page paper was easy if you're writing about things you're passionate about. Yeah, I was like, able to just, I would do everything like in double in single space and then do the double space thing. I'm like, oh, I got too many pages. Yeah. I gotta I gotta delete some of this stuff. Filter, um yeah. so yeah, okay. So in the class I met I met Miss Mira Frisch. Uh, she's a celloist instructor at UNCC, okay. but she was in class at UNCG. Okay. Um, I think, I think she's getting her doctorate or something like that. Um, so fast forward to 2022, I did a show for WDAV, which is the classical music, uh, classical music station called Noteworthy, okay. where you, uh, where they get an artist and they collab with three classical musicians. Um, so it was two artists that night and, um, one of the artists, his name was Nathan Cam. Mira was playing behind him. Okay. And I was like, Mira, like the day of the, 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 day of the show for soundtrack, I was like, yo, Mira, what's up? And I told my wife, my pop, yo, this is my classmate. We were in, at UNCG together. And um, we did, every, we, we uh, so we all did a performance. Mm-hmm. After that, my head was like, my mind, my brain was just going in circles. I'm like, oh my God, like I need to do something with this. Okay. Right. I've always dreamed of like doing the Charlotte Symphony. Uh-huh. Um, Maybe that time will come right now. I'm just, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, Mira, let's, can we grab coffee like next week? And she was like, yeah, sure. So we grabbed coffee. I was like, listen, I have this idea. I want to do something with an orchestra, a symphony. She was like, well, I actually have a Charlotte Strings Collective. It's a mix of UNCC faculty, students, and um, alumni. And I was like, dang, how many people we got? She's like, it's like 25 of us. I'm like, oh, snap. I said, I really want to like do like a big production. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, well, we have a recital in February. Um, we could do like three of your songs and see how it works. You know, it could be like the start of something. Right. Mm-hmm. And so fast forward to like last month, we we had three rehearsals in January. Did the recital. That thing went crazy. I'm, I'm sure talking about cool. like even the department was like, we've never seen this recital hall this this packed. Mm. I'm like, I, I mean, I told people to come out. Just you know having what I'm fun. Saying? Yep. Yeah. So we did. Um, they they did their pieces, and then I came out and we did my three my three songs. Yeah. We did I, we did three songs, and my DJ was with me to accompany me as well. Yeah. And uh, it just went crazy, and mm. so now, you know, uh, that's forming more opportunities, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I was performing and I kept seeing these two guys in the front in suits. I'm like, who are these guys? As I'm performing, I just kept looking like, yo, who are these guys in the middle sitting in the front? Come to find out that's the chairman and the dean mm. at UNCC. So they came, they were like the first ones to come up to me after my performance. They're like, hey, we loved you. You know mm. what I'm saying? We want <clears throat> to see how we can keep you involved and in yeah. things we have going on here on campus. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's what it's turned into. Like it's turned into a whole relationship. It's really cool. Uh, me and Mira are, are continuing to do more work. Uh, there's some more projects that they want me part of on campus. Yeah. Outside of campus. Um, Davidson college wants us to come there and do the same thing. Yeah. So come, like next year, I'll probably at Davidson college. Mm. Um, we're, we're putting that together. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on something even bigger than this. I just can't talk about yeah. it right now. Yeah, I got you. Um, but it's going to turn into something amazing that involves, that involves, uh, high school students. Okay. I'll just say that. Okay. Very cool. And I'll tell you offline when I'm working. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, got you. I got you. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Um, so I want to ask you this and we ask everybody this and it's, yeah. it's kind of one of those where like, uh, I, I always kind of preface it or not always, but I'm going to just cause it kind of helps capture the vision of the show. Like, and I, sure. I already told you this, which is just the idea that like music, uh, at least in my life has been this sort of connecting point for, for literally like tons of different relationships in my life. Like you're talking for about sure. playing a show and you end up, even though I'm, I don't know if the Dean plays music, but nah, point being like there to see. you met him yeah. through it. Right. Yes. And what you're talking about is like, this is what I do. This is kind of the vision. Mm-hmm. And he's seeing this, sort of art that you've made and, and, uh, and it kind of kicks off a conversation. Right. And yeah. like that has been my whole life. Like I, yeah. at a certain point I realized like in high school, like every conversation I entered into, they're like, 
it was always like, this is the band I'm listening to, or this is the riff I'm trying to learn or whatever, like very simple Mm -hmm. conversation really. Um, and the idea that like, man, like so many people have quote unquote, so many differences yet music is something that we all love for sure. Right. Music is something that I, you know, I mean, there are a couple of people you talk to that they're like, I don't listen to music, but like for a musician, that just seems unimaginable. You know, like I, I, I always am like thinking about either music or paying attention to something. And like, you know, occasionally I take a car ride and I'm mm-hmm. like, I want it to be quiet, but generally like music is an ever present thing in my life. And so sure. I've really loved, and I see the value in it being able to be like this connecting point for different people. And so that's why like on the show, like we just invite any, anyone we can talk to that, that loves music and wants to talk about it. Like it really has become just an opportunity to, to connect and create community around it. And so um, we always ask every artist, like what does music mean to you? Man, music means everything. I was, uh, I was, I was saying last week, it's like, I'm like, it's so crazy how music heals. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you listen to something and you're just like, man, afterwards you're like, man, I feel better. Mm. I mean, I don't know what it is. It's like the waves that just hit, that just go through your body Mm. when listening to something. And it's like refreshing. Um, Music is healing to me. You know, it's 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 impactful. It can change somebody's life. You know what I mean? It can mm-hmm. impact somebody's life to where they're like, man, music saved me. Yeah. That's true, man. Like I've I've seen that. I've heard that. I've experienced that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? With me writing this this morning pages project. It yeah. helped. It healed me. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. so I'm like, man, this is like I told I told I told my therapist, like, yo, this project is like, that's my that's that's my graduation. Yeah. You know, because during this whole journey, doing the whole journey of making a project and still being in therapy, yeah. like back in November, she was like, well, I don't need to see you every week now. I can only, I only need to see you like once a month. Like you graduated. And I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> like I, I started tearing up when she said yeah. that, you know? And so she was like, no, like you're good now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what to look out for. You know, you know what triggers on. She's like, you're like, she's like, you know, everything now. And so like, yeah, music to me is healing, impactful, refreshing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think is the is cathartic the right word? Like you can use that word. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I was, you know <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the best in school. Hey, but see, that's that, the yeah, word, either, that's the word either, that came to mind. Like it's a cathartic say, yeah, no, no, no. experience. Yeah. Like it's a healing experience. It is, is, it what is. I, is how absolutely I, how I think it's said. Um yeah, for sure. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um I'm, we're running low on time, so I'm gonna kinda close with this. Uh uh, two questions one is is what's a piece of advice you would give i'm gonna just um, say a younger artist or musician like a newer artist or musician so not young but like i like want some advice yeah Man, like for up and coming take chances take risks you will make mistakes you'll learn from them mm. uh, and keep going do not give up if music is in your heart it's impossible to give up <laughs> yeah. you know there's many times i told my wife i was like yo i'm done she's like no you're not because you're going to keep making music mm. make music because you love it yeah don't make music because you want to be famous. If it gets you famous, that's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? If it gets you, if it get, makes you go viral, that's a blessing. I, I mean, I have so many kids saying like, I want to be a rapper because I want to go viral. Do you even love it? Yeah. Is, is what you're talking about even real what you go through? Mm-hmm. Then no, like you're wasting your time. Find mm-hmm. something you love. Yeah. I love music. Yeah. I mean, I eat, sleep and breathe. Like there's sometimes we get in the car and my wife is like, let's just, be quiet. Let's just have quiet time in the car. I like it. I'm always I'm always wanting to hear something. I don't know what it is. While, while it's silent yeah, in the car. Like, I'm always <laughs> wanting to like I'm always wanting to hear music all the time. And yeah. you know, it's music has brought people together, man. It's it's dope. You know what I'm saying? So I, I the younger crowd, like, make music because you love it and just never give up. You're gonna make some mistakes, mm. learn from them, don't make them again. Yeah. And just keep going. It's yeah. good. Yeah. It's good. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna close with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us about the song. You're you said it's Browns Ferry, right? That's what you said. The name yes, is. Browns Ferry. Well, tell us about that for sure. Yeah, so Browns Ferry is a neighborhood that I grew up in. Uh, that was like the first house I grew up in, the only house. My parents still live there. Hmm. Uh, we live on Brown. Yeah, we live in Browns Ferry. I'm Don't say, say the well. address. <laughs> I was about to go crazy. Uh, so yeah, they uh, they still live in Browns Ferry. And uh, it was a point of a point. It was I wrote this song back in like 2019. I remember putting it out in 2020. It was like one of those songs where it, I was able to kind of, for one, I was able to talk about my upbringing. But at that time, I was kind of dealing with uh, my brother. I have two siblings, older siblings. I'm the youngest in the family, but I have a brother who's unfortunately in- incarcerated. He's been incarcerated since 2012. Okay, uh, he's still in 
Uh, but I think he's getting out pretty soon. Hmm. Um, but I was kind of like dealing with that. So I kind of wrote. I kind of wrote that first verse is about that. Hmm. Some of the hook is about that too. But then my second verse is kind of like about my upbringing as a kid. Okay. You know, knowing that like, I don't want to live that life that he's in, mm -hmm. but I know he's getting better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that's. So Brown's Ferry is like that reminder of like where I came from. Hmm. Dude, it's been so great to have you on the show. It's been dope, man. It's been awesome to talk it. to you. I really love, uh, I really like, honestly, I think the biggest thing for me was hearing that idea of the morning pages like the full encompassing idea yeah. that was really cool i appreciate um, it man. i appreciate it i want to i want to uh just take a second and shout out like any social media you want to shout out oh yeah y'all can find me anywhere young citizen it's just y-u-n-g c-i-t-i-z-e-n you can find that everywhere you can find me at youngcitizen.com youtube Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, cool. Without any uh, further ado, we're going to wrap the show here. Uh, but this is Brown's Ferry by Young Citizen. All right. Searching for a deal on my last meal. Crack the seal, so much I can take. Gotta take a meal. Constant battle, got so many wounds. Hope to start to heal. It's getting real. It's getting real. Yeah, let's go. Seems like I'm a crab in a bucket. It'll take a while before I catch one. Feeling like I'm living robotic. Once I get that chance, I'm a living like Connie. Always catch me at my high. Ain't gonna never see me low. I ain't above the cloudy. Yeah, I'm focused on this growth. Nothing left but to evolve. Ain't gonna never see me fall. Oh, my brother, get out soon. In this world, is getting Yo, cutting hair, taking college courses. All he see is gold. We'll call him up, tell a different stories. Praying for his soul. Mama stayed paying on his books. Now he on the road. She not getting younger, always worry. Putting on the toe. Told a concert. No, I always gotta keep it lifted, though. It's getting harder, harder for myself. Life is getting slow, in the rush, always on the grind, ain't no tippy toe, receiving blessings, lift my hands to God, let me get some more, feel refreshed, like a grand open, now I'm on the go, now I'm fighting for this life, I can go below, whatever happens in the dark, it'll start to glow, and I'm just trying to grab a break, let me catch my flow, I can feel, searching for a deal, on my last meal, crack the seal, so much I can take, Gotta take a meal, constant battle, got so many wounds. Hope it's not the hill. It's getting real. It's getting real. Yeah. Huh. Seems like I'm a crab in a bucket. It'll take a while before I catch one. Huh. Huh. Feeling like I'm living robotic. Huh. Once I get that chance, I'm a living iconic. Always catch me at my high, ain't gon' never see me fold High above the cloudy skies, yeah I'm focused on this growth Nothing left but to evolve, ain't gon' never see me fold Hope my brother get out soon Yo, back when I was young, never thought I had the state of mind Auntie told me, always keep my head and eyes on the prize No surprise, no I always wouldn't be them other guys Parents taught me better, I was never caught up in disguise Different folk, I was raised a little different fully Like a sponge, I didn't seen a lot of life fully soaked on the swivel looking both ways cause i'm always woke gary coleman even be excited like on different strokes takes a village now that my family got me we got the power every hour paved the way put in work and they earn the flowers world is ours 2020 vision now we on a mission the goal is i can bless them put them in position i can feel searching for a deal on my last meal crack the seal so much i can take gotta take a meal constant battle got so many wounds hope they start to heal it's getting real it's getting real yeah huh. seems like i'm a crab in a bucket huh. it'll take a while before i catch feeling like i'm living robotic once i get that chance i'm a living icon Always catch me at my high, ain't gon' never see me low High above the cloudy skies, yeah I'm focused on his growth Nothing left but to evolve, ain't gon' never see me fold Hope my brother get out soon, in this world it's getting cold mm. Hope my brother get out soon, in this world it's getting cold